just a few days ago, the High Tide Racing League MF Racing Designs Cup Series saw their swing to Fort Worth, Texas for some good old fashioned Gen 4 racing on a very old 2008 scan of the famed Texas Motor Speedway. Today, it is brand new cars around this brand new layout. It is, of course, the Speed Tires Plus Cup Series live on Green Flag TV. Good afternoon, one and all. Uh, good afternoon, one and all, and welcome to the show. My name is Ola Bramble, bringing you all the action from start to finish, an 80 lap sprint then around this 1.5 mile quad oval down in Fort Worth. It's gonna be big, it's gonna be fast, and you know for a fact we are in for some good action here tonight. 25 plus cars getting set to qualify to see how things are gonna line up for race number nine of the Thursday Night Cup Series. You take a look, of course, at the uh, schedule entering tonight's race. We are closing in on the chase with the Tires Plus Cup. Only one month of racing remains. Talladega, Dover, Kansas, and Darlington will be the remaining tracks after tonight. But of course, before we get to all of that, you got, of course, the point standings, which continue to be ever tight for that final precious seventh spot. Kevin Cantonio now sits just nine points above from Martin Plute. Plute, of course, coming home with a phenomenal podium at Martinsville just one week ago. And right now, the Twisted Steel Stake Appeal, number 81, is looking to go on the offensive to try to see if he can get around Cantoni to punch his ticket into the chase for the second season in a row. Ryan Shelton leading the way by over 20 points. No surprise, he has been the driver to beat all season long. Before we get to uh, everything that's going on down to the race I want to give a quick shout out to some of the folks that help to keep the lights on here for the Speed Tires Plus Cup Series. Tonight's broadcast and the entire season is brought to you by Tires Plus Total Car Care. At Tires Plus, they understand tires, but understand that you may not, and that's perfectly okay. Because at the end of the day, it's their job to work with you to figure out what tire options may work best for your vehicle, driving style, and budget. They do this by offering a range of suggestions from good to better to best, and they give you the room to choose. They also make tire buying easy with the ability to shop, get a quote, and schedule installation online. And they're there for the durations with rotations and repairs. From simple oil changes to brakes and alignments, including your ADAS sensors, they don't believe in performing unnecessary repairs. They'll tell you what's best to be taken care of now and what can wait, because at the end of the day, it's your car and your call. As well as that, tonight's race brought to you by Max Graphics. Max Graphics is all of your graphic design needs. From NASCAR to sim racing, logos, banners, posters, t-shirt design, and other commercial uses, find out today at facebook.com forward slash Max Graphics Design, sponsors of the Poll Award. As well as that, tonight brought to you by Brookstone Animal Hospital. Brookstone Animal Hospital is a double AHA accredited, full service veterinary medical boarding and grooming facilities serving Metro Atlanta. Their mission is to provide modern and up-to-date medicine while tailoring their care to the individual needs of each animal and owner. They strive to support and nurture the health and well-being of all animals and treat their clients and their pets as members of the family. Visit BrookstoneVet.com to schedule your appointment today. Other sponsors include Twisted Steel Steak Appeal, Sim Wrap Market, Adam and Box, McCone Setup Shop, Beer Street Journal, Firestone, and JNR Craftworks. Qualifying for the most part has uh, drawn to a close. There's only uh, three cars that have not yet put down a qualifying time. Mike Vorkrid working this way around the racetrack is not one of them. The Firestone machine lunged into the turns three and four to get a bit of a shallow entry into the final couple of corners. Currently sits 23rd on the charts and over a second off of Travis Eyde who runs up in 22nd. Comes across the start finish stretch this time by. And will this be of any sort of improvement? It will not appear so, so Mike Borker will stay where he's at. Jason Chu trying to work his way out of the racetrack. Not going to be able to get there in time, though. He is going to be forced to start this race from the back of the field. So various days that Tim Branson will also not be putting down qualifying laps in this five-minute session. With all of that, we are pretty much set and ready to go, then, for the race here at Fort Worth, Texas, with the Texas Motor Speedway. So as we'll take things over to qualify, let's take a run of what your official starting grid is going to look like as we get set to duke it out for what will be, no doubt, a very intense 80 laps of racing action around the quad oval in the Lone Star State. Josh McDougall starts on the pole with Kevin Cantonio, the hometown hero beside him on the front row. Stan Hausman for Max Graphics Races will be in third place with Ryan Shelton in fourth. Jason Gross is fifth. Vinatsa Major is sixth. Josiah Vincent making his second start in speed competition is in eighth for Vincent Motorsports with Christopher Darling in eighth. Jeffrey Pirog is in ninth spot with Ben Mashburn in tenth. 
Carl the Charles from Cool Runnings Racing is in 11th. Martin Plute from MGR is going to be in 12th. Aaron Mack for U.S. Army Esports. Be in the number 13th position with Josh Emerson out of the Midwest in 14th. Michael Mooney for Old Guy Racing will line it up beside MGR's Doug Milliner. OGR's Tim Allman will be in 17th with Emmett Lindquist down in 18th. 19th spot holds Jabba Motorsports' Mark McFadden alongside Corey Hutchinson out of Florida. Michael McRonald from the Prairie States will be in 21st. Travis Hyde in 22nd. BSRO Racing's Mike Borkred will uh, close out the tail end of the field a second and a half off of the Max Graphics pull sitter Josh McDougal, Jason Shoes, Zedarius Days, and Tim Branson. All not putting down qualifying laps for race number nine. So the pace car going to roll. And the field of 26 cars will get set to rumble away. 80 laps is not a long race. It's over 50 laps shorter than your typical uh, stock car races around here are. Most leagues that run these Gen 7 cars tend to run at least 134, if not 167, depending on if they're running uh, 200 or 250 mile. Or it's not even 150 miles here this evening. I mean, this is a very, very short race tonight, just like what we saw at Atlanta. So expect this one to go by in a hurry. One pit stop anticipated on the afternoon. It'll be 120 miles to take us through to the checkered flag. See the last of the runners catch it up to the tail end of the uh, I racing pacing line. And your Max Grax Pull Award winner, Josh McDougall, will be the one to lead us to the green. As always, we're happy that you're joining us here on a Thursday night. The Speed Tires Plus Cup Series ready to kick off another chapter of racing action. For the Lone Star State, we'll enter the restart zone. It's time to go, go, go! McDougal leads lap number one to green as we fire across the start finish stretch. So a couple of drivers side slapping into the wall, coming out of turn number two and one even down the pit strip before we got to turn one. Three wide, meanwhile, as Mashburn trying to line up an overtake way around the top side. No room though for the 23. He'll tuck it in line behind Christopher Darling. Plute trying to scrap it out with Vincent and Emerson down into three and four. While McDougal leads the first two laps of racing action tonight from Texas Motor Speedway, Devin Pierron. Also trying to see if he can throw that number 46 car and get his nose into the ring. While up in the front, no one so far able to mount a charge on that number 45. Kevin Cantonio enters this race right on the playoff bubble by only nine points. He needs to have himself with some good points days. So the PR uh, Precision Racing Esports machine is looking set to have himself with a uh, solid drive up at the head of this field for now. Running second, might fall to points leader Ryan Shelton as the rookie taking it down low into turns one and two, trying to put that, uh, that BLO machine up into the number two spot down the back stretch. McDougal remaining secure in his run up and uh, in the lead of this race. But again, not by much as guys like Shelton really looking to pile on that pressure to the back of the spot by Camry. Almost contact there for second coming down into turn one. Cantonio and Shelton remain two abreast. There that time there was a bit of a rub there. And it will be Cantonio who will pull out the gap. Ryan Shelton falls back to third. 
That's allowed for Gracias and the MGR Camry along with Minazzi Major to start to close in. And now Major trying to see if he can uh, go on the offensive and make a lunge for fourth. The Sprite Chevy Camaro currently runs in that number five position. Uh, only up one spot. Stan Hauser, the driver behind of down three. As you work the back stretch. Further behind, Martin Pluto, the Twisted Steel Camry, way up the track. Going to give up a spot to Josiah Vincent. Going to give up another spot to uh, Devin Purog. And that'll put Plute outside of the top 10. Burned up a lot of his equipment in the opening salvo of laps, trying to make up whatever spots he could muster. And now, started to go on the backslide as the tire wear kicks in early around TMS. Further behind, Zedarius Days and Tim Branson now engaged in a bit of a slug fest. This is for 21st on the racetrack. First spot outside of the top 20 as Branson takes that one to the inside of days. Just up the road, McFadden and Hutchinson uh, doing battle for 19th. So you got battles all the way up and down throughout this field, and this is right now the one that is the furthest back in the field. Up front, McDougal, Cantonio, Shelton still run. One, two, and three. And here's where it gets one of the big problems of this newer version of Texas, right? The profile of the way these corners are laid out does make it extremely difficult to try to get a, an overtake going. You have to really work to set this up. I don't think we're going to be seeing a lot of those charges that we saw Aaron Smith make on Monday night where you had uh, drivers going and uh, making up two positions by just putting the hammer down and sending it around the outside. Stan Hauser looking like he's recovered on his pace a little bit. He dropped again those three positions early in the race. And ever since has been slowly trying to claw that gap back down the uh, stretch and into turns uh, three and four. Still running three spots down in sixth, yes, but critically, he's hanging on to the back of the leaders, so that's good news for him. The top six themselves remain line astern. No changes in the front runners ever since about lap three. Antonio looking for the lead this time by into turn uh, three. And can the hometown hero try to make a charge to the point? He's going to do so. Cantonio leads the way from Texas. McDougal dropping all the way back to fourth onto the back straightaway. This boy, that uh, got a little hectic there for the 45 machine for a bit as he's going to go from being in the lead to outside of the podium in just the span of one lap. And could have had to lose the top five years, but not see Major trying to open up a run to the inside. Working that back straightaway so far, still clean as we do go making up some more ground. There is Ryan Shelton. Your points leader running in a solid second place. And again in the Tampa Major to the inside. And McDougal shuts the door. Open up the door now for Stan Hauser to try to attack around the top. But how's he going to falter on pace? And he's going to lose out. He will not be able to make a charge back to fifth. Major, though, still hugging that inside line. I mean, he's going to take it in three and four. And that's going to force McDougal to drop now down to sixth. Not a good opening quarter of this race for your pull sitter as he has now dropped five positions in only about three laps. And right on cue, you can see everybody else up, up the road starting to break apart a bit. 
showing that perhaps McDougal was the common denominator for us getting such a tight battle up there for the top five spots in the early goings of this race. He's going to let Christopher Darling throw the inside of three and four. And Ben Mashburn still in the fray as well. McDougal's backslide continues while further behind. You take a look at the fight for 21st on back. Sedarius Days, Michael McGrunnels, and Corey Hutchinson all still packed up tight together. You've got the 1 and 2 and the 28. Looking to exchange blows and a really shallow exit there from McGrunnels, not tracking out at all. And that's going to give a huge burst of speed to Hutchinson around the outside. And that'll be enough to clear him down to turn uh, three. Trouble for Doug Milliner going into the infield. And the number six going to falter. Take a look back on what happened to the uh, number six here. As all this went down, coming out of turn numbers three and four. For the Wonder Brand Mustang, wondering if this is already a lap too late. We'll get a look here. Nope, there it is. Kicks the back end out and it goes screaming through the grass, giving it a good old lawn job. Did a good, uh, did do good work on hanging on to that Mustang and keeping himself pointed in the right direction. And now Stan Hausman cutting that first dog leg as Josiah Vincent under a lot of pressure being swamped. He was just overtaken by Mashburn Pirro trying to make it three wide up the middle. We've got caution flying number one as Josh Emerson slides into the infield. And he has got huge damage on the right front. That car is destroyed. Cantonio leads to tick off lap number 20. Take a look back on what happened here to Emerson. Well, this is a bit late to the party, and that's already in progress. Went all sorts of wrong. We'll take another look back, and... Well, from that, I'm willing to bet he broke loose off the corner. That is a hard hit into the outside wall. Spins that 73 all the way around, and then backs it up and into the infield grass. Off the corner, and sure enough, just got loose, and oh, man, heavy lick into the fence. That's a harder hit than I thought. Well, right on board. Ouch. It's a very high-speed part of the circuit, and that's one of the hardest places you can hit, too. Got a lot of cars into pit road. Well over half the field. Only looking like the top seven on the timings tower right now have stayed out. Everyone else going for four tires and fuel. Antonio will win this race off of pit road. With the rest of the pack siphoning out behind. Already a quarter of the way through racing action at Texas Motor Speedway. We'll take a step back. You're watching the Speed Cup Series on Green Flag TV. Racing isn't easy. But experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race.
race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway, where we are coming to the close of caution fly number one on the night. After what was a wild way to kick off this race, and we are ready to get back into the saddle and try to go all out towards the, uh, the end of this race, although cautions are never too far away. Yellow flag number one comes out for a hard crash for Josh Emerson, who is now down and out of this race. He is in pit road. Will be three laps down when we take the green flag. It was a self-inflicted error, got sideways off of four. Pace car is off. We'll work back into the restart zone. Green flag back in the air. And already, how about this? Looking for three wide, almost four. Cantonio trying to send it in around the top. Remember, the top seven did not take uh, tires or any kind of pit stop under that caution. Cantonio was the furthest up driver that did. And he is trying to make moves in his number 15 car as he hightails it around. Turn numbers three and four to the front stretch. But looking like the tires might not have been the answer because, I mean, he's not making up as much speed as you might expect somebody on a very tired, dag heavy racetrack. He's going to shoot for three wide up the middle, trying to get into with Pirog and McRuddles. Oh, a bit of contact there. McRuddles squeezing Cantonio in as Pirog fights his way through. Boy, that got aggressive. And right now, the first driver on fresh tires is Christopher Darling. Running in sixth, breaking around Michael Mooney and taking other tire takers like Stan Hausman with him. An absolute hornet's nest down the back stretch. There's a lot of people trying to get some speed going, get themselves organized. It's a tall order though. When you're at a track this demanding, Take a look at the giant field fanning out down the back stretch. Still a bit of three wide, and oh boy, are we going to go for four? Almost four wide, deep in the field. McRonald's almost going around, getting into Hutchinson. Everyone up front, still clean for now. I'll give these guys credit. I would have thought we'd have had another yellow fly by now with how these guys are racing each other. They've been doing a phenomenal uh, task, though, of keeping this race clean and green. Ryan Shelton, Jason Garcia, and Manazzi Major run first, second, and third. Stan Hausman overtakes Darley for fourth, and Hausman, remember, still on fresh rubber, looking for the outside to break around Major. And late that line for the third position, coming down the back stretch. And can he get around Gracias now? Oh, he backed out. Gracias shut the door and cut off the run. It's allowing Shell to build up that little bit of a gap. But Nazi Major back to the inside, still fighting to get back up to a podium. I don't think he's going to get there, though, is now Hausman trying to fight Gracias to second. Hausman trying to go to the point. He's got up to Shelton. 
And the Beer Street Journal, number 39, to the race lead on lap number 30. Good show there for him. Here, meanwhile, is the uh, battle pack further on back. It's three wide, a pair coming out of turn numbers one and two. And hunting off that no limits backstretch. It is a tall order to keep yourselves with some good racing action here at Texas Motor Speedway. But by golly, but look at that pack down the front stretch. It's very compact, very condensed. A lot of drivers still try to work their way through on uh, new rubber. While all of the drivers on old rubber are causing these guys to slip back. Darley now attacking for the lead down to the turn three. Don Hausman to do the work and burn his stuff up, cutting through the field. And Darley will now try to gun it to the lead as well. Antonio not done fighting this one. He's going to now look to get around the outside. Trouble behind. Monazzi Major into the wall. And Sedarius Days looks like got in there as well to number 12. We'll get away with that without a caution. Antonio hunting to get that lead back. Darling cuts down low and sweeps up. Will we see Cantonio make that drive? Looking high. Trying to settle that momentum run down that front stretch towards turn one. There he goes, making the move. Cantonio back to the lead. Drivers further back like Aaron Mack, still embroiled in the battles of their own. Martin Blue trying to keep Josiah Vincent at bay. Vincent had a very turbulent, whoa, look out as Plute kicks the back end out, gets it underneath him. But again, Josiah Vincent had a very turbulent season, uh, debut at Martinsville last week. Trying to redeem himself after being collected in a few incidents and a top 10 finish would be a good place to start. Hutchinson, Gracias, and Major. Oh, contact! And oh, look out! Hard into the inside wall for the 28 of Hutchinson. Big crash on the back straightaway. No caution, though. We'll keep it green, but that's going to be a day over for the 28. Ben Maslin will try to follow him into pit road. That was a vicious hit into the inside wall. Good grief. And that all came on the back straightaway as Gracias hooks the 28. Heavy shot into the inside fence. On board with uh, Hutchinson. Boom. Rips the front clip apart. And Darling trying to battle back to Cantonio for the lead. Hometown hero going for it around the outside of one and two. Hard charger for Cantonio. Takes that one high and wide. And the Texas homeboy is back to the front of the Lone Star State. Right where Cantonio wants to be, Aaron Mack. And Josiah Vince is still embroiled in their own little battle for sixth, further down the road. Carlton, Charles, and Evan Lindquist. Scrapping for ninth. Lindquist to the bottom. Charles up on the top. And looking like that 40 car will take that one down low for an easy ninth place coming out of turn four. All the while, Aaron Mack. Trying to keep McDougal at bay. He's not going to get there as McDougal try to get back to the point. Your Max Graphics Pole Award winner. Absolutely gunning it. Towards the front. 
Devin Purog now trying to attack Darley as Darley may have burned his stuff up trying to keep uh, Cantonio behind him. The battle's picking up in earnest as Devin Pirog still fighting with that 11 for second. That's allowing Kevin Cantonio to drive around for the race lead. And we may very well have a second round of pit stop still in store for us here this afternoon, including the drivers that already came down. We know for a fact that those that stayed out in the last caution can't make it to the end. We're halfway home, though. 40 down, 40 to go from Texas. Darling and Pirog, side by side. Darling gets the hole. And Pirog might have to give this fight up for now. Try again another day. Off of four, a Slightly wounded T.J. Allman trying to fight it out with Manazzi Major, and I'm going to retract that. It doesn't look like Allman's wounded. Just an interesting design job on the hood of that car. McFadden tracking up wide. Allman to the bottom. Whoa, boy, days way to the inside. Going to base, but Manazzi Major got close to the wall. Garcia's going to get in there to boot. And the Valvoline Mustang makes up a spot on the Canadian. While Gracias and Major scrap it out for 16th just behind them. Sedaria stays in the all tail throwback Camaro. Trying to make up some more speed as well. Days looking inside as they'll both get around Major, who used to be a big front runner in this field. He'll drop to 18th as Sedaria stays secures 17th. Way up the road, Hausman, Mack, Plute, and more. All still packed up wide to Stern and nearly getting run over there off a of turn two was Aaron Mack. Mack going for six, trying to make that look around while you're right on board with Martin Plute down to the turn one. And look at how Buck is able to close back on the U.S. Army Esports driver just in front of him. The issue right now is the fact that he is not able to make that run as effectively as he might like. Gracias is into pit road. So we're seeing more and more drivers starting to fall victims of the fuel window as Plute trying to battle it out against Mack off of turns uh, three and four. Mack. Can he go for it? Tried it, couldn't get there. Plute still battling with him on the inside line. Whoa, whoa, look out! Oh, hard crash into the wall goes Allman. And that will be caution number two. Slides down and nails McFadden. And that all came out because Ryan Shelton was trying to get to pit road and stacked up the pack. Oh, boy. Another hard lick for a few drivers coming off the corner. Take a look as you saw Shelton try to come down into pit road. We'll back this up just a little bit more for you here. There's Allman looking to the inside of Doug Milner. They were battling it out for, I think, was 13. Then watch Shelton here. He's going to enter stage left. Big time, slow on the racetrack, trying to get down to pit road. Allman can't get out of the way. Runs over the 99. Tags Milner. Sent them both hard into the outside wall. That spins the 83 machine out, and then watch what happens here as he slides back across the racetrack and right into the path of Mark McFadden, who had nowhere to go. 
That is just the most unfortunate situation you could ask for in that uh, deal. And then that's a heavy lick in of itself. That's going to once again bring the entire field to the pit road. We'll keep looking at uh, some of these looks here. This is on board with Allman. And you can tell he had no idea Shelton was trying to get to the lane. Spins him around and then... Ugh. Backs it right into McFadden. This is on board with Milliner, who took a pretty hard lick into the wall. Ouch. That's not a light hit, I can promise you that. That would have uh, done a good bit of damage. That This is with McFadden arriving late on the scene. Shelton realizes the clock's going to come out and won't make it, and he cuts right back across McFadden. And that caused McFadden to slam on the brakes. If he had kept it in the throttle, he might have missed that. Just a messy, messy situation all around. And caused by miscommunication, trying to get down to the lane. And Oh, Sidarius Days also getting up and into the wall in the big way. So the driver of the 12 car getting in the fray as well. And he had nothing to do with this. Again, sees all this happening, just doesn't know where to go. And he lost the back end trying to avoid all in as he slid across the racetrack. A strange incident then for caution number two. We'll take the chance to once again thank some of the folks that helped get the lights on here for the Tires Plus Cup Series. Tonight's race brought to you by Beer Street Journal, one of the largest online collections of original content dedicated to covering beer culture, education, and advancement of the beer industry. With thousands of articles, millions of unique visitors, and exposure in over 200 countries, Beer Street Journal is paving the way to enabling category growth, engaging the broader consumer base, and promoting better taste in beer for years to come. BeerStreetJournal.com, the best in beer. As well as that, this race tonight brought to you by Twisted Steel Steak Appeal. Twisted Steel Steak Appeal is a uh, has a solid punch of sweet and a heat flavor that lingers to let you know it's there. Marty Plute is an award-winning steak cook off Association Cook, and he has finally received, uh, revealed his secret recipe rub that will blow you away with flavor. Steak veggies, fish, pork, and poultry. Twisted Steel Steak Appeal is a rub above the rest. That was, I think, the Twisted Steel wreck of the race right there. And by JNR Craftworks. JNR Craftworks is your source for custom iris and awards from full color personalized mouse pads to laser cut wood and acrylic trophies and blacks. JNR has something for any budget. They also offer a large variety of wood, acrylic, and resin decorations and craft items and are proud to work with several different iris and leagues, including speed. Check them out today at WW, uh, not WW, but check them out today at JNRCraftworks.com. Other sponsors include Simrack Mar uh, Sim Mark Mark and McConey Setup Shop, Admin Box, Max Graphics, Brookstone Animal Hospital, Firestone, and last but certainly not least, by Tires Plus, Total Car Care. Tires and serves that keep you in the driver's seat. Well, the lights will go out aboard the iRacing pace car, and we'll get back to green flag racing this time by. It was a wild wreck that puts us under this second caution flag of the evening. And it's because of this big mess coming out of the turn. Numbers uh, three and four. I'm going to be honest. I think Allman should have just held the brakes there against the outside wall. There was no reason to slide across the racetrack like that. That just exacerbated the whole situation. And caused two other cars to get caught up through no fault of their own. Well, we'll get back to green flag racing with 29 laps to go on the docket. San Hausman and Martin Plute will lead the way from the front row. They have not pitted since lap 20. Also not coming down into this caution was Emmett Lindquist. Restarting in third. So expected this to get wild in a hurry as the pace car once again into pit road. Hausman into the restart zone. 
Three flags out. We're underway. 29 to go. Three wide already. Cantonio trying to go two for two in a turn. Numbers one and two. Pluto sending the 15 up the track and out of the groove in the middle line. Might be all for not as. Whoa, look out, way to the back stretch was Carl De Charles low on the racetrack as he got way crossed up on cold tires coming out of three and four. Emmy Lindquist will fall to Cantonio, who's already trying to establish that run once again. For the behind, a couple of cars getting a little bit crossed up with one another, but the battle is on for second on back. Whoa, Cantonio giving a hip check to Christopher Darling down the back stretch and into turn uh, into turn three. They're both battling for the lead. They're on the same pit cycle, both on fresh tires. Plute scrapes the outside wall. Hausman continues to take away laps. Cantonio and Darling both duking it out side by side for second. Stanhausen up wide. Here we go. Three wide for the lead in turn four. And Darling comes out the victor. A tremendous driver, Darling, but here comes Cantonio. He's not going to take this lying down. Antonio tries to drive this one back up to the point. Devin Pirog on his inside. Oh, getting a little bit twitchy there for Pirog as the 36 machine takes it down low. Steals away the uh, second place. Antonio into the outside wall that time. And that stacks him up into Josiah Vincent. Gets the hammer down, though, and shoots back to the bottom of Pirog. Significant damage to the uh, whole right side of that number 15. And we'll have to see what that could mean for him, if that's going to impact his run at all. He's still fighting it out down the back stretch, but I mean, Texas is a pretty aero dependent racetrack. These are very aero dependent cars. Could this be trouble? Contact with Pirog in three. Muscles the 46 up and wide. The battle for second rages on. Josiah Vincent trying to cut into the Coca Cola Camaro to make his run for his first podium of the Speed Tires Plus Cup Series. And could he, in fact, go for runner-up? Ryan Sheldon, last lap on. Put down the fastest lap of the race with the 29.76. The only driver to break into the 29.7 bracket all evening long. So Sheldon on in charge in that seventh position as well. We'll have to keep eyes out for him. A little bit of three wide action in the back here as well as guys like Malinquist and Josh McDougall are still embroiled in their own battles. Carl and Charles and Morgan in here. Whoa, Plute way up the racetrack. Where are you going as Martin Plute gives it up for Tim Branson to the inside. Mashburn and McFadden also in the fray, also side by side of the battles for ninth on back. Carl the Charles still at a risk of losing some of these positions as they've worked through uh, the high banks of three and four. Here are the front runners. 20 laps to go into the final quarter of this race. Darden still hanging on to the lead, but Cantonio is there and he's looking to charge. Further behind, Vincent, Pirog, Mack, and more also still two to rest as well. 
I told you the start, race and action never too far away. And oh, they tried for three wide. Shelton got boxed in. Couldn't make a run, but not for lack of effort. Max to hanging on to the inside of uh, Pirog gear for four. Good chunk of the battles for the back. Starting to break apart right now. The only one that's side by side is Vincar with Charles and Tim Branson. While Aaron Mack and Pirog rubbing doors in three and four. And Shelton nearly getting on the end as well. Very much in the end game now. Final quarter of this race underway. Mack again sends it in. And doors Pirog for about the fourth lap in a row. Shelton's in as well. And oh, into the outside wall. Big brawl for the points leader. Shelton spins, slides into the, into the infield. And that is big damage for the 9-9 car coming into this race. Over 20 points, clear with the lead. And an aggressive battle comes to an explosive end. Get a look back and we'll slow this down as Air Mag muscled. Pirog got first, Shelton got tight, rubbed into Pirog. They got locked together. And hard hit into the outside wall for the 36. Not punted the 99 as well, around as well. Sheldon took a slide through the infield grass. But other than that, it ended up being no hard, no foul. Take another look back. This is going to be at speed. There was the first hit there. And then, uh, well, here comes the second. Hard lick into the outside wall. Shelton did manage, by the way, to somehow... Pick up the spot for sixth. I'm not sure how, but he did. He's on board. There's the first hit from Mack, and then Shelton just comes in full speed and gets turned into the wall. Darling remains out on the racetrack. And Jason Gracias will be the recipient of the Brookstone Animal Hospital Lucky Dog. Caution flag is out for the third time tonight. We'll be restarted this race with under 15 laps to go. We'll take a step back and be with you for the remainder of this race in a few.
Welcome back to the Speed Tires Plus Cup Series where we are getting set to duke it out for 13 laps to the end of this race. Again, a split call. Top 10 have all stayed out. 11th on back. Entered this final dash on fresh tires. Oh boy, this is gonna be a wild finish. You know that for a fact. Cantonio still seeing if he can't try to hunt down a race win in his home state at his home track. Will he be successful? He's already got two points wins on the season. The pace car is down, green flags up. We're back to racing. Cantonio trying to see if he can get around Darling early on, but Darling opened up a pretty sizable gap in the early goings here of this restart. We're side by side for third behind. Vincent hangs on for a podium, and Mack way up wide in turn four, unfazed from his hit with Shelton into the wall. Sorry, un uh, unfazed from his hit with Purog from earlier on. But now we will see what his defensive game is like when he's placed on the outside as he's got Devin Purog down low. We know how aggressive he is on offense. Will his defensive game show that same gusto as McDougal to the inside at three and four, and yellow flag is out. And it is for Devin Purog who has just taken a tow back to pit road. Looking like Jason Gross, Mike Morkrit, and TJ Allman all getting into this as well. Take a look back. Oh, just gets up into Sidarius Days here, coming off of turn uh, two. Slides down, nails Gracias, and pounds that inside wall to then Gracias. Slid up the racetrack, uh, collected Emerson. Oh, nowhere for Allman to go. And again, another series of vicious hits. There you see Hero uh, getting spun around, and then there's the hit that collected the 53, and then here comes Allman, try to go to the inside, and hole closed. Charles did a good job to get around that. It's unfortunate that uh, the same could be said for some of his competitors. Just a little hit is all it takes, and around they go. On board with Allman. Nope, wrong place to go. That is a, that's a shame. That really is a shame. They were looking to have themselves a pretty good race, and this is with Morkrid. Front row seat, there's how it all started. Ah. And they all just kind of came together. And this will be with Pirog. This will be a good indicator of how hard this hit actually was. Yeah, that's a hard enough hit to knock him out of the race for sure. And then this was what happened with uh, Gracias in a little bit more detail on the back straightaway. Man, that is such a big shame. And then you see Carl DeCharles and the 28 just barely sneaking through. So restart with less than 10 to go. a lot uh, still to come this, e uh, this weekend on Green Flag TV. We'll, of course, uh, be swinging out to the VSCA Sports Car Championship down in California for their second trip. Uh, it's been east to west to east to west, uh, four, fourth trip now, coast to coast. Daytona, the Long Beach to Seaver, then back to California to the WeatherTech Raceway at Laguna Sega. That'll be a two-hour and 40-minute sprint race of the course to Monterey. Austin Edstrom will be in the booth with myself for that race. 
and later that same evening, bringing you all the action from the TNGG IEL Truck Series from the Magic Mile on April 13th at 7.55 p.m. Eastern Time. And then the Sunday following, the ASRL Next Gen Cup Series will run down to the Phoenix Raceway at 7.25 p.m. Eastern Time. Let's go out aboard the iRacing uh, pace car. And we'll restart with seven to go. Once again, you look into the races coming on up on uh, in the Speed Tires Plus Cup Series, and it's uh, it's a big uh, weekend coming up. Well, it's a big Thursday coming up next week on April 18th as the Talladega Super Speedway. We'll be rolling uh, back to we'll rolling back to speed, and that'll be a 70 lapper. There were a few incidents last season, but I believe it only had about one yellow flag in the whole race. But it's a track where it's never too far away, so we'll see how next week will go. That'll be bound to shake up the points a little bit. Darling still leads. Cantoni was not able to mount a charge on the last restart. We'll see if it'll be any different this time by. Three different manufacturers all in the top three. Toyota from Ford from Chevy. And the hometown hero, Kevin Cantonio. Still seeing what he can do from the outside line on the restart. Pace cars off. Into the restart zone. Three flags out. We're underway. Field fans out down the back straight away, but for now, Darling continuing to hang on. Fights on for third. Mack around the outside of Vincent. Cannot complete the pass. Vincent remains firmly positioned in third. Three wide and a bit of contact as Hausman into the side of uh, McFadden. Martin Plut way up the racetrack as well, trying to muster what, what few spots there are left for offer for him. Well, Carl to Charles Vinazzi Manger and now Jason Shu. All get it into it down to the turn numbers three and four. Five laps to go, this time by at the stripe. Darn meanwhile, pulling out a half second gap over Kevin Cantonio. This is not looking good if Cantonio wants to get that spot back. He's going to have to mount a big charge here late in the going. Josiah Vincent, meanwhile, trying to hang on a couple cars into the outside wall on the back stretch. Vincent will lose out on third. Aaron Mack is up to the number three spot. Once again, two driver, uh, four drivers going to abreast. Shu, Mashburn, Hausman, and Plute. All drivers that were up at the front earlier on in this race and have all since slid back. A lot of aggressive lane changes going on in these closing laps as drivers are really getting those elbows out. Three wide. Chu back and out from the inside. Gives the spot up to Hausman and Plut. Munazzi Major, fastest lap of the race last time by with a 29-7-2.
and Milinkwitz, jo uh, Josh McDougal, and Carlton Charles all still packed up. Line of Stern. The rest of the field slicing and dicing to again try to see who will come out on top this afternoon in the Lone Star State. Christopher Darling looking for his first win of 2024 has not been to victory lane since October of last year at Martinsville in this penultimate race of the season. He'll take the Beer Street Journal one to go. Does can't tell you how have anything for Darling in the closing laps. Doesn't look like he will. Oh, Darling's just got to run this thing out. To the front straightaway. The drought is over, and Christopher Darling will win at Texas Motor Speedway. The rest of the field fires across the line. But it is a good feeling for Christopher Darling who will finally get back to victory lane after a pain staking eight, nine races, sorry, of headache and coming up short. This time, he can proudly burn it down in victory lane. So as Chris uh, continues his celebrations on the front straightaway, we'll get ourselves a quick look at your official post-race results after what was a wild one from Texas Motor Speedway tonight. The defending champion takes it back to victory lane with Kevin Cantonio in the number two spot. Aaron Mack will round out the podium. Josiah Vincent brings it home in fourth with Maxim Major in fifth. Emma Linquist was sixth. Ben Mashburn seventh. Plute was eighth. Branson ninth. Josh McDougal rounds out the top ten. Stan Hausman, Carl the Charles, Michael Mooney, Jason Shu, Jason Gracias, Mark McFadden, Sedarius Days, and Mike McRunnels. The last cars on the lead lap. From there, you have Mike Borker in 19th, TJ Ullman in 20th, Travis I, 21st, Devin Pirog, and Corey Hutchison. The last cars to finish this race with Shelton, Emerson, and Milliner, all marked as DNFs. All 26 cars made it at least to halfway. Well, we'll get the chance now to uh, take a quick chat here with uh, some of the podium finishers here at the end of what was a very wild night of racing from the Lone Star State. And we will look, of course, to uh, pick things up first and foremost with the driver that is able to come home in victory lane. And for the first time in 2024, your defending champion will take himself onto the top step. Darling, you finally end the drought here in the Lone Star State. And it's got to feel good being able to fend off the hometown hero. Uh, definitely awesome. Um, I wasn't I wasn't really sure how this season was going to go. There's a lot of fast guys out here, but man, I felt good. Um, speed came out of nowhere on that last little run, so uh, just really happy to get a win here. Kind of walk us through the race as a whole because, boy, it was an aggressive grudge match between you and Kevin Cantonio for a good chunk of the uh, of the race there. Yeah, most of the race was just uh, saving tires and making sure that I made it to the end, honestly. Um I don't know. I th I'm not sure if I saved a little more tire than him on that last long run. I know we, we both pit around like lap 45, but uh, I don't know. I, I let him by on that run because I thought he was a lot faster, and he, he was at the time. Um, I think I was able to save a little tire, and that might have helped me on those two little short runs. But uh, I don't know. I took the restart, uh, timed it just right to catch him off guard, and was able to get a big enough lead. I didn't really have to worry about it too much. Well, you look forward uh, to next week. You mentioned it was all about the tires tonight. Well, it's going to be all about the fuel next week at the Talladega Super Speedway. What's going to be the game plan for Alabama? 
the game plan is definitely make it to the end. That's number one, right? Everywhere we go, but next week especially, uh, big pack racing. Everybody's got a chance to win, so I uh, expect guys to sort of be a little more aggressive than usual, maybe. Uh, so just, you know, trying to uh, manage the race and make sure that you stay out of that big wreck whenever it happens, because it will happen at some point. You just... Uh, you just gotta, you, you gotta make sure you know that you, uh, you gotta make sure you feel when it's coming and try to get out of there. Well, we'll let you get back to celebrating. Congratulations on going to victory lane for the first time here in 2024. And we'll see you next week at the biggest, baddest track on the calendar. Thanks, buddy. Christopher Darling taking it home for the top step tonight for the Speed Tires Plus Cup Series. That'll take us down to Kevin Cantonio, the driver whose racetrack is his home, comes up just short tonight. Kevin, what a battle, though, between yourself and Darling there throughout that race. Walk us through it. Okay, sorry, I just connected. What, did you have, what was the question? Um, walk us through the battle you have with Christopher Darling there because, holy cow, what a race. Uh, yeah, I honestly don't really remember. He kind of just got in front of me. I think I got loose or something. Something happened. I was behind people who didn't take tires, and it was it was tough to get around them. And then Chris just got around me, and he just he stuck it out. It was it, it was hard to to back. He kept covering the inside, and I just couldn't get it. Christopher's mentioning that it was all a, a tire game tonight, and of course it was all, always very split calls as to who came down to pit road on every one of the cautions that we had. Um, what was it like having to constantly be on the receiving end of having to drive through the field? Uh, honestly, it was kind of fun. It was a, uh, it was interesting. I was I was scared half the time because there was people getting uh, looked like they'd come up on me in the corners, but. I'd have more grip, so I have a little bit more control over that. But uh, it was a bit stressful, but also fun, because I know that with the tire wear and the, the heat over the stint, you just you overtake the people that didn't pit. And while we look forward now towards, uh, well, race number 10 on the calendar, Talladega Super Speedway, it's, uh, it's going to be a ride for sure in Alabama. What's going to be the game plan to see if you can go one better at uh, Talladega? Uh, hopefully live every super speedway I've done this season has ended in death so <laughs> hopefully it's uh, the opposite well this is the first time to turn everything around so we'll see how things will turn out for you when we go racing uh, up in Alabama one week from now but congratulations on taking that second place regardless and we'll see you next week thank you Kevin Cantonio joining us up for the number two step on the podium and that will take us down to Aaron Mack, the driver that uh, took that third place position here tonight as he was able to uh, come home and uh, secure the final step on the podium. Aaron, it was an aggressive fight for you for throughout much of this race. Let's focus uh, first off what happened uh, with you, Shelton, and Pirog coming uh, with just a handful of laps to go. Walk us through the incident. Yeah, uh, with that incident, I, I think Ryan might have been just trying to push it and being a little more aggressive than others and must have pushed up or something into Devin and I guess kind of caused a wreck coming out of four. Well, overall, it was, uh, it was an aggressive fight for you. We saw you uh, really having to cut your way through the field and uh, it looked like you were getting the elbows out quite a good bit there in the closing stages. Uh, what's it like having to battle back when you have that mentality of, you know, caution comes out and then you have a green with a few laps to go? Uh, Josiah put up a heck of a fight towards the end there and... Uh, it must have been just a couple of good runs coming out of either two or uh, four there, and I was able to get past him. Well, we look uh, to next week, the final plate race of the season at Talladega Super Speedway. What's going to be the game plan for that 31 car in Alabama? Uh, hopefully have friends out there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully, we'll see how things are going to pan on out for you uh, when we go racing to Talladega. And for now, congratulations on taking number three. All right, thanks. Aaron Mack joining us up. Final uh, podium finisher here this evening. Mentioned he was hoping to have some friends next week. Personally, I know of a couple drivers that might not be too friendly with Aaron Mack when we go racing, one of them being uh, Devin Pirog. But what a wild race that was tonight. And uh, as always, the Speed Tires Plus Cup Series never fails to disappoint. When we go racing next week, it will be, of course, at Talladega Super Speedway. Before we get to that, though, we've got a doubleheader coming up on Saturday. 
for the DSCA Sports Car Championship running down to WeatherTech Raceway at Laguna Seca for a two hour and 40 minute sprint as well as the TNGG IL Trucks Series swinging out to the Magic Mile for the Lobster State 150 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And then on Sunday night, as always, the Israel Next Gen Cup Series also sees a Western swing to Avondale, Arizona to race at the old version of Phoenix. For us here, though, from Texas Motor Speedway, that's all the time we got for one night. What an incredible race tonight was. We'll see you all next week when we go racing in Alabama.